Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be counting down the top 5 legendary weapon and item farming locations that you can use to get a ton of legendaries in Borderlands 3. With the recent level cap increase from 50 to 53, you'll want to be getting your favorite legendaries again at their new max level, and this video will help you get them fast by showing you the best farms that drop the most loot. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like. It helps me to keep the uploads coming, and let's get started. Number 5 graces us with the Agonizer 9000. You fight at the end of the Guts of Carnivora. He's probably the easiest person to kill on this list, with a number of critical spots and his weakness to corrosive weapons. If you want to kill him fast, all you need is a Corrosive Cutsman, but any weapon will do the trick. He does have one immune phase when his health is nearing its end, but if you're quick enough, you can avoid it. The Agonizer 9000 drops about 2.5 legendaries per kill on Mayhem 4, and there's even times when he can drop upwards of 5 or even 10 like you see here. He also has a big dedicated loot pool with 5 items in it, but most notably, He's dedicated to dropping the Dictator. Number 4 is the Rampager, the first major boss fight of the game who you encounter in the Forgotten Basilica. The Rampager is an annoying but easy fight as long as you have the right gear. The simplest way to kill it is combining an Unforgiven with a Shock Coil Relic, as you can see me doing here. All you have to do is ground slam next to him with the Unforgiven in your hand. The coil will damage him and when it hits crits you will see big chunks taken out of his health thanks to the Unforgiven's critical hit bonus. The Rampager does have 3 immunity stages though which means the fight goes on a lot longer than it probably should. It does drop a lot of loot up near the 3 legendary to kill mark on average while you're playing on Mayhem 4 which is great. If only you could kill him quicker though. Freddy the Trader sits at number 3, a DLC 1 exclusive target you fight in the VIP tower. The great thing about this farm is that you don't need to save and quit once you're done to do it again. All you need to do is kill all of the loader bots to get him to spawn the first time, and then after you've killed him just teleport to the spawn point. When you run back in, he will be there and you can repeat this process again and again as much as you'd like. This will net you more legendaries faster than anything else in this countdown, but there's a couple of reasons why it's only third. The first one is that as mentioned before, it can only be farmed by players who have the first DLC, and the second is that about 50% of the guns that drop are from the DLC, which limits its overall viability, but does make it the best DLC item farm. Number 2 and we're almost there, this time we are brought to the slaughter shaft, the best circle of slaughter currently available to farm legendaries at. It's the best because of the high number of enemies that spawn in, and also because of the large number of badass and anointed enemies, which both have a high chance to drop legendaries. It's also small so you don't have to do any running, just killing. What you're seeing here is the result of completing just the first round of the slaughter, which took me about 7 minutes. It may not seem like a lot, but the slaughter shaft becomes exponentially more beneficial the longer you farm it, as you don't need to save and quit. All you need to do is begin a new round. I also find it more enjoyable than boss farming, so it serves well in that case too. Before number 1 is revealed, let's take a look at a couple honourable mentions. The first one being Captain Traunt. You fight Captain Traunt at the end of Athenus, and he has about the same drop rate as the Agonizer 9000. What he does have though that the Agonizer doesn't, is a bunch of chests, 5 in total. 2 white Iridian chests, 1 red one, and a couple of normal ones. All 5 of these chests can drop legendaries, especially on Mayhem 4, and even the standard white ones as seen here, and he's a good legendary farm target because of this. 
Another honourable mention is Tyrene the Destroyer, who is the final boss of the game that you take on and destroy his rift. Tyrene can be annoying to kill if the fight drags on too long, but if it doesn't, she will drop a good amount of legendaries often. She also has a nice dedicated loot pool which contains both the King's and Queen's Call, along with the Otto Idol, which are considered nice bonuses when your farming world drops. Number 1, and you all knew this was coming, Grave Ward, everyone's favourite punching bag. The good thing about Grave Ward is he's easy to kill as long as you're equipped well, and there's no immune stages either. He also drops an average of 3 legendaries while farming on Mayhem 4, which is the most that you're gonna see in the game, unless, say, you're killing Wotan. Grave Ward does get a little boring though when you've killed him so much, so consider changing it up and farming something else on this list if you're tired of him. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you can use it to get those level 53 guns you're after quickly. If it did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.